Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Something a little bit different today, going to go back in time a bit to uh, a map released by Lexor about 8 months ago according to his Tumblr, which he updated uh, to version 1.1 a week or so back. And uh, it's called Mining Complex and it's set on Mars and uh, the reason I decided to take a look at this is because it features some new textures and models and generally kind of a new environment which is always fun to see in Half-Life 2 it's always nice to get away from the traditional kind of urban decay I suppose there's some cool effects going on here now you notice the reflections on the floor I always wondered why more people didn't use this I mean I'm guessing you can just kind of take one of the water shaders and take away the you know, the ripple effect uh, bump map and just have it be, you know, a perfectly reflective surface and then just apply, you know, a standard floor texture to it. Uh, looks like that's what Lex has done here. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Uh, of course, the only issue with stuff like this is that you can't see your own reflection, <laughs> which is a bit odd. Uh, that happens in a lot of games, so I suppose I'm just kind of used to it. But yeah, the, the aesthetic here is very much kind of like 1950s kind of moon base, I guess, even though we're on Mars, but it just feels like, reminds me a lot of James Bond, Moonraker, <laughs> you know, all these kind of old sci-fi movies. Uh, it's quite nice, actually. Some of the lighting uh, a bit later on, you'll see, is actually really nice. Got some like huge like light pillars, which kind of just uh, soak the entire area in this kind of really bright light, which looks quite nice. There's lots of kind of new textures and props all over the place, which is pretty cool. Now, the one thing I thought I was a bit lacking is uh, the kind of sound effects, and uh, not necessarily things like new sound effects, but just like sound effects in general. Like, there's not really a lot of uh, soundscape usage and ambience. It's very, very quiet. You get these really cool vistas, though, like looking out onto the surface of Mars. Uh, it reminds me a lot of games like Doom 3, actually. Uh, it would have been nice to perhaps have some like dust clouds and stuff rolling by outside. You just got these huge structures going into the skybox, which looks very, very cool. Here's those light pillars I was talking about. It's a really nice uh, aesthetic overall. Here's what I'm getting on about with the sound, it's just, you can't really hear anything here, it just feels completely dead, which is a bit of a shame. All the new textures you see here are actually really high quality, The uh, all the kind of bump mapping and the uh, specular mapping he's done for them is really, really high quality. Really, really like it. And this is really old work as well, I mean Lexor, obviously he's released uh, Depot, which contained a whole ton of new models and textures and everything and that was really high quality visuals as well. He's also done his refresh of uh, Diversion, another Half-Life 2 EP2 map he released a while ago. Uh, I must do a video of that as well actually because I've done a video of the original, it'll be fun to go through and have a look at all the changes he's done. But uh, the refresh of Diversion, uh, I'll stick a link in the description as well. That's also a really really nice map. Yeah, he certainly knows his stuff. Very talented artist. So the map does have some gameplay in it. It's not just kind of a visual piece. Um, I felt for the most part the gameplay was kind of very, very simplistic. And uh, it seemed like the focus of this map really wasn't on too much on gameplay. It was more about, you know, just creating a new environment type and uh, exploring it a little bit. Uh, there's there's some combat here and there. Um, I didn't enjoy a lot of it to be honest. Uh, these intro bits with the combine head crabs was quite fun because you don't have a weapon, so you're kind of panicking running around. I thought that was quite interesting because typically you have a weapon when you encounter these guys, and they can be pretty dangerous if you just kind of sit around waiting for them to kill you. But uh, for the most part, I think this map falls into a bit of a trap of just picking one enemy type and throwing lots of it at you in kind of an arena style combat. 
I mean, I've got nothing against arena-style combat environments. Hell, I play enough Quake. Uh, I do enjoy that kind of gameplay, but the problem here is that there's just not enough variety. So, uh, Lexor uses a lot of the fast headcrab zombies in uh, for most of the map, actually. And uh, it's just constantly just headcrab zombies everywhere. This is like the only area in the map where there aren't headcrab zombies. <laughs> fast headcrab zombies, should I say. But yeah, I, I think the fast... The fast zombie really does get stale very quickly if it's not kind of mixed in with other enemy types. You generally just end up just backpedaling and uh, strafing to the left or right to avoid their hits. It gets pretty dull quite quickly. Some LV246 style vents here, which I quite enjoyed. <laughs> this area was a bit puzzling. Um, so, again, we've got a giant fan. And, uh, I like the way that Lexel shows enemies getting sucked into it and being killed. The only problem with this is that I really didn't want to go in here because I just saw an enemy get sucked into a giant fan and killed. <laughs> So yeah, it's a bit strange. You can actually um, feel yourself being pulled towards the fan even while you're in this vent here, so it's just another uh, kind of impetus not to go in there. <laughs> so I actually checked back here to see if I could actually break through this grate at the end here, but you actually can't, so yeah, I wasn't too much of a fan of that. I really didn't want to go into that room, but you're just left with no other option. It was just a case of YOLOing it in there and hoping that level designer's got your back. <laughs> Should never really be the case. Turns out you can kind of fight against the current and push yourself forwards. The push trigger here seems to have a much bigger effect against enemies than it does against you. This map also features quite a lot of locked door syndrome. So all these doors here that you're seeing, anything off the uh, beaten track is uh, completely non-explorable, which is a shame. In this giant Mars base it would have been great to kind of explore around a bit and uh, see what you can find. But now it's, it's definitely a very, very linear experience. The map is definitely at its best when you're kind of exploring these big kind of surface area environments. Uh, going underground into all these kind of corridors, it's, it's kind of a little bit... You don't really feel like you're on Mars anymore. It's a real shame. I feel like a lot of these corridors, if they've been opened up, opened up to kind of the outdoor environment and just have like, you know, the giant glass ceilings and stuff, even in the corridors, it would have really helped here. As, as it sounds, you're like, wow, look at this huge Martian environment, and then you open a door and you're in a you know, a Half-Life underground tunnel. <laughs> you may as well be back in Black Mesa again. You've got all these kind of props here that don't really make a lot of sense, so... The, the shipping containers I can kind of understand, stuff like... Uh, wooden pallets and stuff like that on a Mars base. It's, eh, kind of question that a little bit. It's a little bit odd. Again here it's really really quiet again, the ambience just completely disappears. I like the setup of the screen in the windows here, so you see the door opening on the screen and then you notice it out the window as well, it gives you a kind of reference point for what the button does, which is a problem I see way too often in custom maps, is that you press a button and you have no idea what just happened. So this is kind of what I'm talking about with the arena. So you've got this timed arena segment here where you just have to survive against all these fast zombies until the bridge uh, opens. I feel like you're kind of limited a bit if you only want to use zombies in your map. Uh, 
because you know there's a very limited pool of zombies. But what I really would have liked here is perhaps some uh, poison zombies to turn up. I think the occasional poison zombie mixed with the fast egg crabs can create a really interesting combination. The uh, Lexor just kind of sticks to the one enemy type here. Again, even throwing in some of the uh, infested combine would have been great as well. As it stands, it does get kind of dull very quickly. Stock up on ammo again. And we can go forwards. Yeah, it's, it's a shame, like, huge swaths of the map just kind of disregard the the beautiful theme he had in the first half of the map so that this doesn't feel like a Mars base at all anymore it could be anywhere like, like I was just mentioning it could be Black Mesa it could be Facility X <laughs> you know add your name here I feel like the map would have been much stronger if it kept its uh, visual style consistent so, I mean, th this actually looks really really cool I think I love the aesthetic here. You've just got this giant skybox environment with kind of huge towers over there. This area actually hurt my frame rate quite a lot actually. So I'm not, not quite sure what's going on there. But you notice here like there's all these corridors going off in different directions but there's only a actually one door you can go through. It's a bit of a shame. This lift takes ages as well. It's a shame, I mean, you've got this beautiful skybox environment. Why not have a lift with windows so you can actually have a look at it while it's moving upwards incredibly slowly? <laughs> as it stands, you're just kind of stuck in here staring at these metal walls. These teleporter models remind me a lot of the uh, kind of transportation tubes from Portal, Portal 2. Pretty cool. Yeah, a little bit of story here. I'm not sure how much I like uh, taking the uh, viewpoint away from the player, for those kind of things. I think it would have been really cool if you actually hit the button and like the whole room starts vibrating and you can see the dish moving above you, perhaps some big sound effect or something. It would have been a, a lot cooler, I think, in my opinion, to keep the, uh, keep the centered view on the player camera. Generally, that's typically what Half-Life games are all about, kind of the, the rigid focus on the player camera and never really deviating from it. Now for the final few minutes we get to go underground a bit. Wouldn't it be Mars without going underground into some uh, mining tunnels? <laughs> this area I actually thought was quite cool. Even though, again, you kind of removed from the cool Martian exterior environments. It's still pretty cool in its own regard. I really like this lift ride as opposed to the one we took earlier. I was just kind of staring at this metal box for a, a minute or so. This one's actually pretty cool get a huge sense of scale as it kind of lowered into the pit. 
I love the fact that you can see the sky above you and then it just kind of disappears into this kind of haze as you go down. It's very cool. It's just little things like seeing the zombies climbing up all the pipes and everything. It's so much more interesting than the other lift ride we had. This environment here is pretty cool as well. I like the use of just the one big spotlight kind of illuminating the uh, mining machine. That's very cool. But again, fast zombies. I mean, I guess the idea here is that perhaps the storyline is that kind of aliens have infested this Mars colony. But rather than creating an alien model, we just decided to use fast head crab zombies. You know, making environment textures and models is one thing, making fully animated characters is quite another, I guess. It's a lot of work. So, I mean, that's perhaps that's the reason why it's such a rigid focus on the uh, fast head crab zombies. But yeah, I think it does hurt the gameplay overall. Let's turn on the mining machine, that seems like a great plan. And somehow, that fixes the radar dish. <laughs> Don't ask me why, it just does. So yeah, a bit of a strange story, and uh, very, very contrived. You know, cool environments. Uh, obviously, the story is very, very loose, but uh, I enjoyed it nonetheless. Alright, I'll see you next time.